This thing is gonna probably revolution your desk. Well, actually, not the box, but this one, the Apple Magic Trackpad. So, let's talk about it. Welcome here to my channel, I'm Simone Piclotti, and this one is gonna be a sort of a different review of the Apple Magic Trackpad. In fact, I've been using it over the last year, and so this one is gonna be a sort of a review plus complete experience of using this product for more than a year. The first thing to talk about are the design and the materials of the product. In fact, first of all, the design. As you can see, it's extremely clean, extremely great to see. Talking about the quality throughout the time, as I said, I've been using it since January 2023, so more than a year. And I mean, it's almost perfect. There's no any scratches, any little line on the surface. So I would say that's pretty perfect. And talking about the material themselves, on the surface, so on the touch surface, we have a surface of glass. Then on the sides, we have a metal frame. And after, on the lower part of the product, we have just a plastic plate. But you know, you're not gonna see it. The following thing to talk about is how this thing actually works. Basically, it's a sort of an extension of the trackpad of the MacBook. And so you're just gonna place this product on your desk, wherever you want on the left, on the center, on the right, wherever you want and you're just gonna use your finger to move into the interface of your MacBook. Now, if you've ever tried a MacBook, you'll probably know how great the gestures are just to move around the interface of your computer. And these things happen even on the trackpad. So basically the gestures are some hand movements on this touch surface. The really great thing about the gestures are that they allows you to save, I mean, literally lots of time. And just to make some example with the gesture, you can, for example, zoom in or zoom out, move between pages, rotate photos, or even move between apps. And this, in my opinion, is the literally the best gestures on MacBooks and there are lots of other things so there's literally an infinity of things of movements that you can do. Now I would like to say two words about the compatibility of the Magic Trackpad. With the MacBooks this trackpad is basically perfect because you can connect it both with the Bluetooth or even you can use a lightning cable, yeah, the trapper still has a lightning port, but to me it's not a big problem. So you can connect it with the lightning cable and then you're just ready to go. And in the meantime, you're gonna recharge it. With an iPad, here we have some problems. Because, first thing, you need to disconnect it from your MacBook. Then, you cannot connect it to the iPad with the cable, but you need, you need to use the Bluetooth. If you want to go back to the MacBook, you need to use or the cable or just reconnect it again with the Bluetooth. But in my opinion, using this trackpad with an iPad doesn't make much sense because just the iPad, you can just touch on it with your fingers. But instead, it do make sense if you use your MacBook and your iPad next to it. In fact, there's a feature, there's Sidecar on MacBook, which allows you to mirror or duplicate the screen of your MacBook on the iPad. And so you can use directly the trackpad connected to the MacBook, even on the iPad, or even there's the new universal control, if I'm not wrong, that allows you to keep the interface on your MacBook and the interface on the iPad, so iPadOS, and to just connect the trackpad to the MacBook and to switch between the two interfaces just moving around when the iPad is near to the MacBook. So this one instead is a great feature and a great way to use the trackpad with both of them. Wait, wait there. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to subscribe. That's so important, that's free and you're going to support my channel. But if you're not enjoying this video, let me know down in the comments why. That, that's important too. I want to know it. And so now let's get back serious and let's go back to the video. Now, let's talk about the experience, my experience with the Apple Magic Trackpad. And I want to go straight to the point, it's positive. You know, I've been using it over the last year and at first it was a bit different to use a touch surface on the desk to interact with the computer, but in the end I can affirm that my experience is pretty, pretty positive. When I switched to this external magic trackpad, I really loved it and in fact, I even stopped using a mouse and I wasn't using just a basic mouse but the Logitech 
MX Master, which in my opinion is a really great mouse and so trackpad in my case, and I mean in my case, is a really great alternative to the mouse. In my case, I'm a student, so I need to use, for example, a computer for web browsing, creating document, Excel files, presentation, and all those simple things. But in that case, you need to move around lots of apps and this trackpad is, I would say, perfect on this side of productivity. But the real debate comes not in this basic but still productive use of the trackpad, but instead in some more complex and professional apps. Lots of people, in fact, criticize the fact that it doesn't have any customizable buttons like it happens, for example, on an MX Master mouse from Logitech, so that you cannot, for example, decide and assign a precise control on a button, and these things doesn't happen on a trackpad. But in my opinion, this critic on the absence of shortcuts on the trackpad doesn't make much sense if we think that in I believe every work, every job, every task, you need to think on what you're doing. So you are not always rushing and moving things, doing things. So you need to think, so do a thing, do a task, then think about it and then do the next one or correct the previous one. So you need to take some time to think about it and so in my opinion the trackpad is not that slow on a productivity view. So let's make directly an example. In my case I use the computer and in this case the trackpad for editing photos, editing videos and in the case of the photos I would say that the trackpad is still great because you know when you edit photos you need to do an adjustment then you need to check if this adjustment is good and after you can continue so you need to take some time to think on what you have done. And the second thing to say on the photo editing is that at first I thought, okay, so for example, the brush tool to select a determinate part of the photo is gonna be pretty difficult, you know, to just brush and paint your photo with the trackpad. So the mouse, I thought that would be a bit better and a bit more precise, but Throughout the time, I noticed that, honestly, you know, the trackpad is pretty precise. And the same thing happens, for example, when I'm editing videos, so I don't find and I don't have any particular difficulty in using the trackpad and in the meantime doing some more precise tasks like moving the clips on the timeline or just doing some cuts, moving the music and all those things. So I, I don't have any particular struggle with the trackpad rather than, for example, the mouse. So in my opinion they are pretty comparable. And one final positive thing about the trackpad I want to say is that you can move it around on your desk and this is really important because if you want to use for example a mouse with your left or right hand in case of professional mouse so with all the buttons that's really important because most of the mouses are created for the right hand. And so if you want to use it maybe with the left hand it's gonna be a bit difficult and the fish is not gonna be as 100% as it happens for example with the right hand. And after all this video it's finally time to talk about the cons. Yeah, the cons of this product. In fact, you know, it's not perfect. In fact, first thing that I didn't like much is the connection between the trackpad and the iPad. That's not great. Second thing is that it's not fully customizable with shortcuts as it happens for example on a professional mouse. And the third important thing is the ergonomics. In fact, I understand that in my case it's great, I really enjoy using it, but for some people it uh, gives some pain to the wrist or to the hand throughout the day. And so in some cases the mouse or even maybe a vertical mouse can be a better solution. And fourth thing that I didn't like much and isn't perfect for this trackpad is that you cannot game with it, but I would say that's obvious if you play two games. I don't play two games, but if you play two games, you know that this thing is not for you. I've tried playing, for example, to Minecraft, but you, you better get a mouse for it, you know. That, that's the solution. Now we come to the price of the Apple Magic Trackpad. First thing in euros, it's gonna cost you 135 in the white version and 155 euros in the black version. So there are these 20 euros of difference between the two colors. I don't know why, but that, that's 
what it is and in the case of dollars you're gonna take it for 129 dollars for the white version and 149 dollars for the black version and you know honestly i believe that's for sure a high price that's not low because you're gonna get a professional mouse for example for for less than 100 euros or dollars but in my opinion if you enjoy using the trackpad of your macbook as i did this trackpad is gonna be a great choice but instead if you don't enjoy in a starting point using the trackpad of your macbook probably this product is not perfectly for you so in my opinion this is the main difference and if you have any more questions about this product just let me know down in the comments and i will be there ready to give you a reply so i would say that's all for this video first thing leave a like if you enjoyed it and if you enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe that's so important so guys i will see you i want to see you so subscribe i want to see you in the next video see you soon guys have a nice day bye see you soon